ever got confused between different types of muscle contractions? Ever thought, why do we need to know all these types of muscle contractions? Well, that's exactly what we're here to find out today. Hi guys, my name is Priya. I'm a sports physio currently working with Vidarbha Cricket Association. I've been working in the field of cricket since last three years. This is my second video on this channel. So if you haven't seen my first video, the link is in the description box. You can go and check that video out as well. All right, so without further ado, let's get into this video. The three types of contractions that we are going to talk about today are isometric contractions, isotonic or dynamic contractions and isokinetic contractions. All right, isometric, isotonic and isokinetic. The first type of contraction that we are going to learn about is isometric contraction. What does the word mean? Iso means same and metric means length. So a muscle contraction in which the muscle contracts produces force in the muscle but there is not an appreciable change in the length of the muscle and there is not a visible joint movement then it is called isometric contraction. A contraction in which force is produced but the length of the muscle doesn't change appreciably and there is not a visible joint movement. That kind of co contraction is called isometric contraction. So the three things to remember about isometric contraction are produces force, doesn't change the length and doesn't do joint movement. All right. If you remember these three words, you, these three things, then you will understand what is isometric contractions. Now that we have learned what is isometric contraction, let me give you an example for it. Suppose I want to flex my elbow, all right, flexing of elbow. But if someone or my other hand is obstructing its way and it's not able to overcome that kind of resistance, then the contraction that occurs in biceps over here will be known as isometric contraction. Now, the second type of contraction that we are going to learn about is isotonic or dynamic contractions. What does the word mean? Isotonic. Iso means same and tonic means tone of the muscle. So isotonic contractions are those type of contractions in which the tone of the muscle remains same or near same and there is change in the length of the muscle and there is a movement at the joint. That type of contractions are called isotonic contractions. So the three things to remember about isotonic contractions are the tone remains the same or near same, there is change in the length of the muscle and there is movement at the joint. The isotonic contractions can be further divided into two subcategories, concentric contractions and eccentric contractions. Now what are concentric contractions? Concentric contractions are the type of contractions in which the muscle length shortens to do a movement against the gravity against an external load. The contraction in which the length of the muscle shortens to do a movement in direction opposite to the gravity against a load is known as concentric contractions. Now what are eccentric contractions? Eccentric contractions are the type of contractions in which the muscle lengthens to maintain or to control the movement of a body part in direction of gravity. All right, the muscle, the contraction in which the muscle lengthens to control the movement of a body part in direction of gravity is known as eccentric contractions. Now that we have learned what are concentric and eccentric contractions, let me give you an example for it. Suppose if I want to lift my arm, okay, if I want to lift my arm, then that movement over here is known as concentric contractions of the arm flexors or shoulder flexors all right if i want to lift my arm it is the movement against gravity the load is the load of my arm the weight of my arm and the contraction which is occurring at the shoulder flexors is known as concentric contractions all right but when i want to bring that arm back down okay when i if i've already put it up and i want to bring it back down in that time what happens is the load is my is the same weight of my arm and when it is coming it's coming in the direction of the gravity and the muscle that are my shoulder flexors are lengthening to maintain that movement and not just drop that arm that kind of contraction is known as eccentric contractions 
all right so when i'm lifting my arm and the muscle is contracting shortening its length in the direction opposite to the gravity that type of contraction is called concentric and when i'm bringing that same arm down and i'm bringing it slowly it's a controlled movement that means my shoulder flexors are going into eccentric contractions now we are going to go to our third type of contraction that is isokinetic contractions what does the word mean the word means iso is same and kinetic means velocity isokinetic is equal to same velocity so a contraction in which the velocity of the change in the length of the muscle it may be lengthening or shortening as well as the velocity of the angular displacement of the joint that is movement of the joint remains the same is known as isokinetic contractions now isokinetic contractions can happen only with the help of an isokinetic dynamometer now that we have learned different types of contractions let's get into the importance of them first of all they are helpful in diagnosis for example if i take isometric contractions isometric contractions form the fundamental base of manual muscle testing as well as resisted isometrics manual muscle testing and resisted isometrics are both very important components of our screening technique all right the manual muscle technique gives us the culprit muscle which is there behind the injury or the pain and the resisted isometric gives us the culprit muscle and it also gives us the degree of injury that has happened to the muscle so isometric contractions or knowing the isometric contractions are very much required for us so that we know which muscle is acting in which position and at which degree so that we can diagnose them now similarly let's talk about isokinetic contractions though the isokinetic contractions do not occur in our day to day activities but the isokinetic dynamometer is considered to be the gold standard for diagnosis of the strength and power of any muscle or muscle group hence we should also know how the isokinetic dynamometer works and for that we need to know what is exactly isokinetic contractions before you can go for any of the muscle testing you have to know the mechanism of injury to understand that you need to understand which muscle is contracting in which type of contraction at that exact moment so that is the importance or the second importance of knowing this topic for example if i take a cricketer a cricketer is complaining of pain doing running between the wickets but he doesn't complain of pain in single runs but in multiple runs so what happens when you're going for multiple runs the when you're going for multiple runs you take a start you accelerate you decelerate your speed stop take a turn and repeat the process so the chances of this is when the person is going for deceleration phase of the run when he's trying to stop himself from a speed position the hamstring muscles are concentric are contracting eccentrically to control the movement of the body so there are higher chances that the injury or the pain coming during the running between the wickets while doing multiple runs is coming from the hamstring muscle rather than any other muscle so to deduce that you need to know different types of contractions the third importance of knowing different types of contractions is the use of different kinds of exercises in the treatment and training protocols for example in a post surgical case suppose a joint is immobilized after a surgery the muscles surrounding the joint have chances of going into wasting to prevent that we go for isometric exercises of these muscles so what happens is when the person becomes mobile or when the joint becomes mobile the strength of the muscle surrounding the joint is maintained and the rehab becomes smoother and faster all right similarly the isometric exercises can also be used for strengthening and muscular endurance purposes in different treatment and training protocols now when i talk about isotonic contractions isotonic contractions or isotonic exercises are extensively used in the treatment and training protocols they are used to men they are used to increase the strength power and muscular endurance they can be done using body weight free weights resistance tubes or machines all right so there are variety of options from which we can choose there are variety of exercises from which we can choose but what happens is whenever you're going for isotonic exercises or you're training a person or you're bringing a person back from his injury people sometimes forget that they should con they should treat 
not just the concentric strength but also the eccentric strength of the muscle so remember that whenever a person is coming back from an injury or an especially if an athlete is coming back from an injury and about to go into the play make sure that you have treated the muscle not just concentrically but eccentrically as well because the eccentric strength is very much required in our day to day activities as well as it's very much required in the gaming activities now let's talk about isogantic contractions isogantic contractions or exercises can be done only with the usage of an isogantic dynamometer these exercises allow you to train a person for strength and power training at higher or slower velocities whichever you require such exercises or such trainings are more commonly used in elite athletes rather than the normal population the reason behind this is that athletes are more prone to using a strength or power generation at a higher velocities than normal population for example a soccer player suppose a soccer player is coming back from an acl injury a soccer player has to run to the ball and kick the ball in different directions using very high power at and at a very high speed so to train for such things you can use an isogantic x dynamometer using a higher velocities all right guys that's the end of this video i hope you guys understood what i'm trying to say if you did please hit that like button and if you even if you enjoyed it if you have any doubts please leave them in the comment section i'll go through them and i'll try to answer as many as possible if you want me to make videos on any specific topic leave them in the comment section as well and i'll try to make as many videos as possible all right if you haven't subscribed please subscribe to this channel so that you can be updated on such topics further and i hope to see you guys next time bye bye